Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last video, I told you the story of the bike behind me and most importantly, how you can have fun on the trails for under 100 bucks. Today, we're gonna make this bike even better with some common tools and some parts that I got off eBay. Okay, first I got this um, Maxi tire for five bucks and I plan to put it on the front wheel for hopefully more grip and avoid future crashes. <laughs> Second, I had this uh, Shimano brake laying around but it had a broken uh, leaking rear caliper. So I bought a spare uh, replacing caliper and I plan actually to put this caliper on the front brake to match the color of the forks and put the front brake caliper on the rear. And then I also got some fancy ceramic brake pads. They were actually not that more expensive than normal metal or, or, or sintered brake pads. So I just had to give them a go and see how they feel. Now I'm gonna roll the time lapse and start shipping this bike down. First I'm gonna remove the wheels and the brakes to hopefully make my job a bit easier. And then we're gonna continue from there. Okay, catch you in a bit. Okay, so I removed the, the wheels, I removed the grips, the brakes, basically everything that we wanted to remove is now gone. Uh, first thing I'm gonna tackle will be swapping the, the front tire so that we can get it out of the way and move to the fun stuff which will be modifying the brakes and yeah, can't wait for that, catch you there. While we're working on the wheels, I'm just gonna quickly swap the rear rotor so that we are finished with the wheels and we don't have to worry about them. Here an impact, always make the job that much faster. Now I'm gonna quickly tighten them up by hand. And that's us done. Yep, good to go. For the brakes, I'm gonna continue with the same gloves. I'm going to change them when I put the new pads on and clean everything up. I will start by taking this brake caliper apart. As there is no pressure in the system, I can remove the caliper without spilling any oil and screw in the other one.
Then I'm going to put these handlebars on the vise. You can do this without them, but it makes it a bit easier and helps keeping the brake lever higher than the brake caliper. Now I'm going to insert the bleeding block that came with the bleeding kit inside the caliper. Open the fluid reservoir and on the lever and then screw in the bleeding reservoir. Now I'm filling in my syringe with oil and removing all air bubbles. This might not have been required because the caliper is full with air, but it's a good practice. After inserting my syringe and opening the bleeding valve, I can start cycling the oil in and out until I, see, I stop seeing bubbles coming back into the syringe. At this point, the caliper is bled and we can close the bleeding valve. Putting the caliper as low as possible and slightly tapping every part of the brake to try and push out any remaining bubbles. A few squeezes of the brake lever and we can close the fluid reservoir and give it a good clean. And the brakes are done. Actually, it went very smooth, which I'm very happy about. These pins are a bit too long, but hopefully they won't be annoying while riding. Here are the new pads. I also cleaned up the wheels and cleaned up the discs with uh, isopropyl alcohol. And everything is ready to be put back together on the bike. I'm very excited and can't wait to show you the end result. Catch you in a bit. Okay, that's a bit for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, and again, wear at least a helmet, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.